it's Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. This is going to be my first in a series of my favorite uh, card making tools and this is going to be for beginners from the tools that you absolutely need. One of my viewers, it goes by Crafts by P. Willie, asked me if I would make this video and so I told her I would. Now because I have some physical limitations with my arthritis, some of the products I choose are based around that and I'll explain that when I get to them about the whys of how I chose them. But first let's start with the most important part of card making and that is paper. When you pick your paper you need a really good thick paper for your card base. Now a lot of people on YouTube will tell you that Nina Solar White is the only card stock that you should use when you're making cards. I am really conscious of price and for me I've bought Nina and I think it's fine but for me I really believe the Recollections heavyweight cardstock from Michaels that's 110 pounds is the best uh, thick nice cardstock for card bases and a card base is what you would fold what you know what your you know your card folded that's what a card base is now I love it and it is so thick and just wonderful it comes in three colors white cream and black and it's very very thick it's like a thin cardboard it's really a nice weight then um, on top of that a layering weight paper I really like this Georgia Pacific I like it for all kinds of techniques for coloring etc it's also 110 pounds but look at the flimsiness of this compared to the the um, recollection this is same it says 110 pounds but look at this this is a paper this is thick so I really like the Georgia Pacific. You get 150 sheets. I don't know if I told you about what you pay for the other. You get 150 sheets of the Georgia Pacific for around $4.88. At least that's what it was when I was at Walmart last. The Recollections is $14.99. Now I'm giving you this without any coupon. So you would pay, you know, if you get a 40% coupon or a 50% coupon, you you know, you're looking at between $7.50 and maybe $8.50 for this. So it's still a really good value. And I recommend again this for your base and then the Walmart brand the excuse me the recollections for your card base and then the Walmart brand for stamping little things and cutting them out for making flowers for using them on a jelly plate for all kinds of different things because of the price difference and you get a hundred sheets of that again for uh, 488 excuse me 150 sheets of that for 488 so it's a really good price now if you want colored layers the recollections at Michaels has uh, 50 sheets in the 65 pound weight which is a, a lighter weight and it's a good weight to you know lay a color in between your layers and you get five colors in a pack and it's $4.99 for 50 sheets and that's without a coupon too so again you're looking at about $2.50 for a pack of that and that's again colors so that you'd have different colors now the next thing you need after you have paper obviously is something to cut it with and I really, really like the Cricut paper trimmer. That's this. It's a 12 inch paper trimmer. Do not get a smaller paper trimmer than this. You will regret it if you do because you'll find paper that's 12 by 12 that you'll just absolutely love, but you won't be able to cut it on your paper trimmer. And if you can't trim it, you won't be able to use it. So my recommendation and the very first mistake I made in buying my first paper trimmer was I bought a small one and then of course I couldn't cut big paper on it. So this is full price, $14.99 just about everywhere but I have it at Joann's and then the the refill for the um, cutting blades is for two of them is $4.99 at Joann's now all you do I hope you can see this to replace the blade is you pull the back off and all you're looking for in a replacement is this teeny tiny piece and then this is where you're gonna put it back into so if you take it apart you just push this back into 
the, the line, the cutting line, and then you just slide this piece into the hole, making sure you don't touch the blade if you can afford it, avoid it, and then you just push it like that and then it's back in and ready to go. So that is how you cut it. Then let me show you how you cut paper. There are there's a normal size card which is called an A2 size card. That is half of a piece of paper. So all you're going to do is you can I on this bar, it's a measuring bar. You take your 11 inch length, which is your long length, and you put it in at five and a half inches and you just cut it in half like that. That is an A2 size card, and I'll show you in a second how you will bend it to make it an A2 size card. The other way you can make an A2 size card is cutting it on the eight and a half inch size, only this time you're going to cut it at four and a quarter. Now I have a video on how to trim paper, and I'll connect this at the end so you know how to do it. I also have a, a video on what papers work best for different products like watercoloring, uh, markers, uh, alcohol markers, things like that. And I'll connect that at the end as well. So this paper trimmer, again, is very inexpensive at $14.99. You normally will pay around $7.50 for it, maybe less. I, I had a 20% off additional coupon, so I think I paid $6 for mine. It's a great trimmer. It's very, very handy. And the reason I love it is this is so handy for me to hold on to. So that's my recommendation for paper trimmers. And make sure that you get the 12-inch size. Now, the other thing that y you might want to consider as a beginning crafter is a corner rounder. Some people like to have cards that the edges are rounded. And this is from Creative Memories. It's discontinued, but it m they might have re uh, remade them, but they might look different than this. But I recommend going to eBay and buying them, and you can find them for less than $10. But you can see I'm doing this holding it in the air, but if, if you only um, have the ability to use one hand, you can hold it down and hold your other arm on it and do that too. So it works really well to round corners. I recommend this very highly. It would be under $10 to buy that. Next, after you've got your paper cut, you need to fold it in half. This is called a scoreboard. And what a scoreboard does is it makes lines in paper and you're thinking to yourself, well, who really needs that? Well, you're going to really need that because when you have your paper, you need a clean folded line. And when you use this Recollections 110 pound cardstock, you can't just do this and fold it or you're going to have really weird bends in it. So my recommendation is to get one of these scoreboards because there are a lot of different uses for it. I'll explain that in a minute. You put your paper in at the eight and a half inch length. There's your measuring board. And then I have a little red line on mine. At four and a quarter, you're going to use your little tool and do this. Now, this scoreboard isn't available anymore, but the Martha scoreboard that is comes with a tool that looks more like this. If you don't like this tool, you can buy these little rounded ball tools, but um, you don't have to. You can always use this to score with. And here's the other thing that's nice about these tools. You fold your card like this and then you hold this. It's called a bone folder. And what that means is it's used to fold really professional creases like that. That's what that's used for. Then we have that paper that we cut long ways like this. You're going to score it and I'll score it using this tool. Since this is 11 inches long, you're going to score it at five and a half. So you're going to stick the point of this down in that gully, and then you'll um, create that kind of a fold. And then you fold it over, and you'll do the same thing with this tool. Now, I'm not particularly fond of using this as my bone folder. I prefer this bone folder, and I'll explain that in just a second. But the scoreboard that Martha Stewart makes, it's a 12 inch at Joann's, is $24.99. You can use a paintbrush instead of this other tool. To, as long as it's bigger than that line, or that gully, if it's 
thinner than the garlic. Let's say you use a, um, a, a butter knife. If the blade of the butter knife is thinner than that little gully, you're going to cut your paper. So you just have to make sure that you're, that whatever you choose, you could use a ballpoint pen that doesn't work and use the pen tip of it. You can do what, you know, you can try anything as long as it isn't thinner than the gully because if it is, it'll cut it. And mine is twenty four ninety nine at Joann's without the the coupon. So you would be able to get this for roughly twelve fifty. So then the next thing you need, as I said, is a bone folder. Now you can use, I could have used that bone folder that I that I got, but I choose this Fiskars one. I really like it because of the shape of it. It's got a really cool like hammerhead to it. So it makes it really easy for me to, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out where my fold is, when I'm trying to fold paper, you see how much more area I have to put on my paper. I really like this and I have the price of it somewhere. We'll find it in a second. Let me get the scoreboard out of the way. The thing that's also nice about these scoreboards is you can use them when you make uh, really fun folded cards. You can use this for that to, to score in a bunch of different ways. It also has this little piece in it that shows you how to make a, an envelope with it. So um, that's great too. So these are really a great tool and I really recommend you getting a scoreboard as one of the first tools that you get. Now here's the Fiskars bone folder that I talked about. It's $5.99 at Joann's, but I think I paid $2.50 or $3 for mine. And um, it really is handy for folding. You could use the tool that came with that. Believe me, a lot of people use it. I'm just saying for me, um, the way it fits in my hand, I like this best. Now another thing that you'll have happen along the way in your in your paper cutting is you might have a fuzzy edge on your card and that means you need to change your blade in your paper cutter and if you have that fuzzy edge I recommend you buying these nail files at <coughs> excuse me Walmart anywhere you can find it's a this is used just for nails but I'm using it for this and it's about a dollar a piece and you just run it over the edge of your card and it gets rid of any of the fuzz that's on the edge of your card then another thing you're going to really want is what's called a pokey tool. Well, that's what we call it. It's really um, the best place to find it is in the clay department where they sell um, clay tools. And this is called a Ribbon Pro Pin Needle Detail Tool. All this information will be down below. You don't really need to be writing anything down fast. But I like to tell you during the video and also I always give step-by-step -step instructions for every video down below in the more information box. I think you should find this uh, at on eBay for 99 cents if you follow that uh, ribbon pro pin needle detail tool. And all it does is it pokes holes in things. And you can use that for brads or if you want to put ribbon in something and you need a little hole to do that. But you'll want one of these and for 99 cents it's a good deal. Now Let's say you decide you want to buy the one that they sell specifically for cards. This is a Tim Holtz pokey tool, uh, and it's called a piercing tool, and it's roughly $7. It does the exact same thing. The only thing is, is it's retractable. I think this is fine, but um, of the two, I have trouble sometimes pulling this in and out, and of the, tool, I, of the two, I like this tool better. Now I'm working on what's called a craft mat, theoretically. Mine is a silicone large baking sheet that's $1.23 on eBay and that is the item number. Let me zoom in so you can see that better. This is um, what's called a large silicone baking sheet. You can smear inks on it, you can spray water on it, you can do all kinds of techniques on it. And if you buy the one from Tim Holtz, I think it's around $16 and mine's $1.23. So of the two, I much prefer mine, but it's up to you if you want to get the one that's in the card area. It's made by Tim Holtz. And that's the information on this. The number is 1421560077801. And that's on eBay. And again, again, this information will be in the information below, so you don't have to worry about it.
Next thing that you need to think about is glue and glue products. These are the things that most people use and it goes like, hold on, I'm missing one. You'll have this which is called a tape runner. Tombow, I just did a video on what, uh, which one works best and this Tombow Mono Permanent Adhesive for $3.89 on Amazon worked the best and it's just a little runner and it has double sided tape in it so what you do is you just fold it over, the tape's already on it and then it taped it shut. Now right away it'll let you pull it back but if you let this set for a couple minutes you will not be able to get that apart. It'll be securely stuck. So um, I recommend this very highly if you want a tape runner. The great big, they call them ATG guns, I have one. I don't recommend it for left-handed people, that's why I don't use it. It's uh, pink, and if you're left-handed, you can't see where the tape is coming out. So that's my non-recommendation for that. Uh, as I said, I just did a video for this, and I'll attach that at the um, end of the video as well. Next thing you're going to want is a wet glue. And this is made by Martha Stewart, and I found it at Tuesday morning for 99 cents. Her glues are very, very good, so if you can find them, I recommend them very highly. Then there's my favorite really strong adhesive that's not a wet glue. It's called um, tear tape, or um, some people call it, I have it written all down, double-sided tape at... Uh, Craft Chameleon, which is an online store, the f quarter inch, which is what this is, is uh, two, 20 yards is $2.50, and 50 yards is $3.95. And all you do is you lay it down where you want to glue something, and then you make sure your edges are pushed down, and you just pull the top piece off. It's better if you use that pokey tool. I should just, sh I should have told you that was another really good reason to own a pokey tool to take the backing off of tear tape. Let me show you how much easier it is. See how I just, that was the way I should have done it to begin with. And then it leaves a tape behind and then you just tape it down. And this is really good for albums or cards, but it really holds things firmly. I recommend uh, that you have some tear tape on hand. It's a, it's a really good, strong tape. Then the next tapes that most people have are foam squares, which is what these are. They're just little raised pieces of foam that have um, adhesive on the bottom and the top, and it just raises up whatever you attach it to. And this was $2, and I got it at a craft show, or excuse me, a stamp show, excuse me, from a man named Gary Berlin and Company, and it was $2 for that many of them. And then lastly is, this is a foam um, long piece of tape that's double-sided. So this gives you a really thick, nice um, backing, and um, you can buy these almost anywhere. I really recommend that you check for um, these foam rolls or foam squares on um, eBay or at a, a site called AliExpress. It's A-L-I-E-X-P-R-E-S-S. And uh, they have really good prices. Now it's coming from China, so it takes a while to get here, but their prices are very good. Craft Chameleon also has very good prices on the foam tape and the, and the foam squares. So those are your glues. I would recommend that you get uh, all four, or five, sorry. But you would want one, two, three, four, five. I would recommend you get all five of those. At some point, um, you're going to use them a lot. This is what's going to keep you sane when you're making cards. Now, in conjunction with glues, the other thing that's really important are scissors. Now, scissors have been really a big struggle for me, and you'll need a pair of, they call these fussy cutting scissors, and you can get this kind, which these are from Stamping Up, or these and this is from Fiskars it's called easy action and you just have to squeeze them it reopens so you just squeeze them and they reopen they're very very sharp 
The Stampin' Up Snips, they're called Paper Snips, they're $10. These are called Fisker's Easy Action 5 inch and they're $19.99, that's full price at Joann's. Now you can also get the very long bladed one that's called a 10 inch and it's $24.99 and um, it does the same thing. You you just have to squeeze it and it opens. You squeeze, it reopens. So it, these are nice if you have problems with your hands and um, I, the, the blades are very, very sharp on them. I keep one set of these just for ribbon and cloth because they cut it so well for me. This is the last pair of scissors you definitely will need. Uh, you're going to need um, one of these two and a pair of these are from Tonic. They're Tim Holtz, six and a half inch, sixteen ninety nine full price at Joann's, and these will cut the rubber stamps. They'll cut through all of the things that you need to trim, and they'll cut through that foam tape. And they're not uh, the things don't stick to them really well. So that's another reason you need them. But they uh, they're used for a variety of things for card making. So you would want to have one of these and one of those. And um, these again are $16.99 at Joann's full price. Next thing I'm going to talk about is ink. And I'm only going to give you the basics of ink, and that is that you're going to want to have um, a, a Versamark ink, which is uh, a clear ink that you use for heat embossing and also for using different, um, you can. You can put chalks on it. You can put like different things that'll stick because it's a very sticky glue. This is Memento Tuxedo Black. It's a very good black ink. And then this, I recanted this. It's Versafine Onyx Black. The container it came in, I didn't like it. It was, it always, the lid kept smacking me in the hand and getting ink all over. So I put it into these Distress inks that are blank. There's nothing in them. So I bought the Reinker and I just put the Reinker for Versafine Onyx Black in there. So um, this is a very good black, black ink. It dries slowly so you can uh, use embossing powder on it. It's just a really good ink. And the Memento ink is really nice with alcohol markers and with other tools. So those are the inks and the prices on them. The Versamark ink is, um, that's the embossing ink. It's $9.99 at Joann's full price. The Versafine Onyx Black is $9.99 also, and the Memento Tuxedo Black is $6.99. Again, those are all at Joann's. Those are all full price. And I'll give, I'll put a video at the end about when you use different types of black inks. Now, when it comes to stamping, you're going to need either acrylic blocks, and acrylic blocks look like this. They're clear plastic, and they have a way to hold them on the hand. You will use this to, to stamp your um, with your your stamps. You'll stamp ink onto cards. Oh, look, I have foam on me. That this is your first step. You'll use acrylic blocks. And the four piece recollections at Michael's of acrylic blocks are $14.99 full price. And that gives you a bunch of different sizes. And you will need different sizes of acrylic blocks. And then the Misty is the ultimate in stamping tools because it allows for you to stamp something repeatedly. So if you make a mistake, you put your stamp on the door and you press down and it it stamps the image. And then if it's not dark enough or if you missed a spot, you do it again. And then you can you can restamp and stamp and stamp several times. This size is $60. The reason I brought this up is because it really is a handy tool. Tim Holtz is coming out with his version of it soon, and his is $34.99 full price, and hopefully it will be um, one of the ones that the craft stores will have on discount, and you'll be able to have it at a much more reasonable price. But the Misty is $60, and this is the size that you'll want. It's the regular size that fits a 5x7 card and smaller. So that is inks and how to stamp them.
then after you stamp your inks, you'll need to clean your inks. You can buy these mists that clean them, and you can do, I mean, that's clearly something that you'll, uh, you'll want to buy, or instead you can make your own stamp cleaner where you buy a spray bottle for a dollar, you put 10 parts of distilled water, one teaspoon of baby shampoo, and one teaspoon of glycerin. Glycerin you find in the nail or hand lotion section of the drugstore or Walmart. You can make bottle after bottle after bottle of that and it's good for all kinds of stamps. It's very um, good for your stamps because of the glycerin and the baby shampoo is, you know, obviously it's good for babies so it's fine for your stamps. So that's my recommendation is instead of buying a stamp cleaner, you make your own. I have one more thing I wanted to go over and that is blending tools. Blending tools are tools that l allow you to move your ink around on the paper. <coughs> when you get one of these, the, the brushes on it are too long. Here's a good use for these, uh, for these um, tim the tonic scissors because they cut through anything. I cut off about three quarters of an inch and you do it kind of slowly, just cut a few and just keep moving on. You want to have one brush for every color family. So you need one, one brush for all your reds, one brush for all your oranges, one brush for all your yellows, your greens, your blues. You basically need nine or ten of these. And then if you're going to use them for different kinds of inks, like if you're going to use only dye inks, you could use just those ten brushes. But if you want to use pigment inks, which is a slow, slow drying ink, I recommend when you first buy your inks that you buy dye inks because they dry quickly and they're easy to use. Pigment inks, you have to heat set them or let them sit overnight to let them dry and you're going to smear things around. So you want to cut off about that much and have it straight and then you're just going to do this and I'll get you a color and show you how to do that. Okay, you take your ink pad and you're going to take your brush so that you have a lot of ink on your brush and then you're just going to smear it around on your background. Maybe you just want an edge that you have some color on. You just do that on your edge. Um, if you want your this to be a lot more intense, you just keep going over it and making it much more intense. Like that. If you use an ink that is water activated, you can uh, put this down and then spray water on it and then you'll get a, a neat effect from that. But I really like these brushes for this, just to use for this alone because if you know if all you want to do is make your edges of your paper red, it works really well. Can you see the little red edge on that? So that is my blending tool and I recommend these very highly compared to um, the other tools that are out there this works better for me because I can hold it really well and it um, has a um, nice finish so those are my favorite beginner crafting tools I hope this helps you if you have any questions please let me know I'm more than happy to give you as much advice as I can in when it comes to <coughs> stamps and dies, my recommendation is to go to AliExpress and eBay first because they have really low prices on stamps and dies. So I would go there before you um, go anywhere else to buy those. And with that, I hope you'll give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell one friend about me on social media because I'd really appreciate it. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.